Hey everyone, Nike here. A lot of people ask me all the time how I have so much gold in game, and I figured it was finally worth making a video about it since it's one of the number one questions I get asked. My routine has changed a lot as different things become more profitable and other things stop being as profitable. Um, so what I do now isn't necessarily what I was doing three months ago and isn't what I was necessarily doing three months from now. Um, also, I will not claim that what I do is the absolute most efficient way to get gold in the game either. There are some better things to do on a gold per hour basis than what I do, but this is more about discussing the uh, philosophy of what I do rather than, as, rather than uh, a guide to what you should be physically doing at all times in-game. Um, before I go into the things that I do, I want to discuss the things I do not do. Uh, in real life, I know plenty of people who make 20 times the amount of money I make at my job, but they somehow struggle to make ends meet, whereas I am fairly comfortable. The difference is that they have really bad spending habits, and I have pretty good spending habits. Uh, the same is true for Guild Wars 2. If you waste your money on things you don't need, you'll never have enough for the things that you do. So with that said, I have a few rules that you should... There's a few rules that I follow in game that prevent me from spending my gold in a dumb way. So the first one is I do not convert gems, or I'm sorry, I do not convert gold to gems. I never have ever in my Guild Wars 2 career converted my gold into gems to buy a gem store item. Every gem store item I have was purchased with gems that I got from real money. The old saying goes that you're better off working at McDonald's and converting gems to gold than farming in-game. Um, well, I don't know about that, because uh, there's a quality of life issue with working at McDonald's that you have to consider, but I am certain that I'm not going to farm for 10 hours in-game just to convert the gold into gems to buy a new glider that I could get with 10 minutes of work uh, at my job. If you need something on the gem store badly enough, Pay for it with cash. If you don't need it badly enough to pay for it with cash, you don't need it at all. Second is eventually you hit a point where you do not need to craft ascended gear. I have crafted a lot of ascended gear in the past, but I haven't crafted any in a very long time. Ascended gear is insanely expensive and getting more and more expensive. Once you have a set of Ascended Gear for your main, resist the temptation to craft more unless you're really rich and you absolutely do not need the gold. You should get enough Ascended weapons and armor from doing fractals, raids, and collections to gear your alt characters fully Ascended for free, even though it might be slightly slow. Use alternative currencies whenever possible. Now that you can get level 60 food or level 70 food, for World v. World tokens, this is especially helpful. Even at a pretty poor rate of exchange, using alternative currencies like Karma, World v. World tokens, Laurels, Map currencies, and Guild commendations are far better than spending gold. Also, buy good level 80 food that is only available during festivals. The price of golden fried dumplings crashed during Lunar New Year and has been climbing ever since. The heal on crit food from Winter's Day was another smart buy during that event. Whenever a best-in-slot food item is available during a festival, it always makes sense to buy them then for cheap, then to pay more for them later. Alright, lastly, have a goal. If I don't have anything I'm working towards or saving for, I am a lot less likely to spend gold wastefully on things I don't really need. For example, if I know I have to save gold for a new legendary, I will be much better about not spending gold on stupid cosmetic items for some second engineer character I have on my account, which I don't really need at all. I think for most players, if they were just to follow those rules and not even go out of their way to farm gold, they would be well enough off to afford a few luxuries every now and again with just normal casual gameplay. But if you don't follow rules like those or similar ones, there's a good chance even if you make 100 or 200 or more gold a day, you will never stop treading water. Um, so what do I actually do? My number one source of income in-game is gathering materials. There are tons of guides out there on what the most efficient gathering routes are, um, and mine, the gathering routes I do are certainly not the absolute best, but what I do is very easy and repeatable and routine. I usually do my daily gathering in the morning before work while eating my cereal, 
or uh, or while watching news or YouTube in the background. Um, so across nine of my characters, every day I gather flax seeds, iron ore, and platinum ore at the rich nodes. Um, the flax seeds are below the Jaka Itza waypoint in Verdant Brink. Rich iron is by the Gallo Fields waypoint, and rich platinum is by the Thistle Reed waypoint. On average, you get about 12 of each item per character. So I get about 100 per day of each commodity. My bank holds about 750 of each. So when my bank fills, I will sell all three stacks at once, and each stack is worth uh, between six to eight gold. This works out to about 50 to 70 gold a week. Um, 50 to 70 gold a week doesn't sound like much compared to people telling you how they make 20 gold per hour gathering. Um, the thing to remember is that this is just something I do for 15 minutes a day while eating my breakfast and barely paying attention. The extra 200 to 250 gold I get for a month for basically doing nothing is pretty good. If you want to go hardcore at gathering and spend hours on it, there are guides out there for doing that that will allow you to maximize your income, and I suggest you take a look at those. But for now, this is just like supplemental income to help uh, keep the bankroll going higher. The second thing I do uh, is daily fractals as much as I can. With a decent group, even a decent pug group, you can finish all tier 4 fractals in about 30 minutes each day pretty easily. Daily fractals give you a chance at ascended armor and weapon drops relatively regularly, which is a key component in saving money, but it also gives around 20 gold in liquid gold, oftentimes more than that depending on RNG. It's so time efficient that I highly recommend doing it. Even if your team is only geared for tier 3s, you and your buddies, you only have like 100 AR and you can only do tier 3s, I would still do those every day until you've geared up for tier 4s. Um, the fractals will make you money while saving you money at the same time, so it's definitely worth 30 minutes of your day to knock those out. Lastly, I do a dungeon tour as much as possible, which works out to about once or twice per week. A solid 16 path dungeon tour takes about two and a half hours and will generate around 30 gold in liquid gold. In addition to that, you can estimate about five to 10 gold in drops uh, that are salvaged into materials or ecto. More importantly, you get 1600 dungeon tokens. A dungeon token has intrinsic value since most of them can be converted into rares, which can be salvaged for ecto. The ones that can't can be turned into insignias uh, or exotics are thrown to the forge. The result is that 30 dungeon tokens is worth about 40 silver. Thus, your dungeon tokens from a tour are worth about another 20 gold. This pushes dungeon tours from being worth about 20 gold per hour into 30 gold per hour, and thus really good money. So in addition to all that, and plus the raids and, me and meta maps and stuff that I do, my income is about 500 gold per week, which isn't insanely high since there are hardcore players that make double that. But 500 gold per week, uh, when I save most of it, adds up really quickly. Um, I hope this was somehow informative. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Thanks guys, and I will see ya.